Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Welcome, welcome. Hope you guys have all been having happy holidays and a, a good, uh, nice holiday season. Merry Christmas and all that stuff. Um, now that uh, now that the new year's coming, um, it's time to start wishing for for new things in the new upcoming year. So uh, someone brought this up on our live stream last night. Figured it'd be uh, kind of a fun video to do. I you know I think Matt's going to do one as well. Just talking about our our omnibus wish list. Um, it's tough to talk about all publishers in one video, so I'm going to start with just DC in this one. I will do a Marvel one because I do have a wish list for Marvel titles. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. And first up for this video is Catwoman by Ed Brubaker. Not a tough decision for me. This is my definitive, definitive run of Catwoman. Not my run, but the definitive one in my opinion. It's... I mean, it's Ed Brubaker, incredible artists like Darwin Cook, Cameron Stewart, Paul Gulasi, Gulasi. Um, a lot of fantastic talent working on this series. And Catwoman, for whatever reason, doesn't have too much omnibus love. I don't think any at all, really. Some deluxes, but that's about it. And there's no better place to start than Ed Brubaker's Catwoman, in my opinion. Um, we're sitting at 37 issues. Currently, you can collect them in three trade paperbacks. Uh, these trade paperbacks are very difficult to find, and when you do manage to find them, they're likely quite expensive. But they do collect the entire run by Ed Brubaker in regular-sized trade paperbacks. So obviously, at 37 issues, it's a very nice size to have as an omnibus. The binding would probably be solid, I would hope. And of course, like I said, Catwoman has not hasn't gotten too much love i mean from from what i know the deluxe editions there i think they've done some jim balent stuff in in deluxe editions but like that's that's pretty much there's no catwoman omnibus and they have the perfect run to do one with not including you know the the will pfeiffer stuff that came after i don't know how good that is but i'm not including it in my my wish list here this is strictly the ed brubaker stuff you know, you have incredible artists like Darwin Cook, you know, who, rest in peace, is, is one of the greatest in the business. And there's no reason not to put his work into an oversized edition. Maybe even Absolute, if you're going to do 37 issues, do two volumes or, or one really massive volume. But, uh, yeah, I mean, between Darwin Cook the, and his ex, the, the smaller panels that he's got that are still jam-packed with detail... You know, you, you get to see Catwoman um, interact with all these uh, fun and exciting characters. And, you know, you see Slam Bradley. Um, you see, of course, Batman show up. But what you really get is is Catwoman at, at her best, right? Going through real struggles, you know, defining her character and, and chiseling chiseling the, the character that is Catwoman um, with, with real hardships. You get really dynamic artwork, vibrant colors, exciting colors, you know, it's it's such a it's such a fun series while also taking you through a roller coaster ride of emotions. And for real, I it, the artwork from start to finish is incredible. Like I said, you start with Darwin Cook, you progress into Cameron Stewart. And what I like about Cameron Stewart is he's got he I like how dynamic his range is on his artwork. Sometimes he I mean he can draw a little more realistic and then sometimes he can draw a little uh a little reminiscent of darwin cook which uh which you'll see here in a little bit but if you're a fan of catwoman this this would be the place to start hopefully we do see an omnibus at some point uh, this would be the series to start like i said it's extremely expensive to get the trade paperbacks now i'm not sure about the single issues i've never tried but i really think the series deserves it um it, it it's you know, the series also, the way it works is, you know, with the artists, it almost feels like the, the style of the story changes as well, um, especially with the Paul Gulasi stuff at the end. If, you, if you've never seen his artwork, I know he did a lot of uh, Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu stuff, and he's got that sort of uh, Kung Fu style, you know, uh, not kind of cheesy movie vibe to him um and and you see sort of ed brubaker's story pair up with that really nicely and then of course with darwin cook and cameron stewart you had more uh more of a film noir espionage kind of vibe to it with again little panels and stuff like that it's a great run i i thoroughly enjoy it i really don't get why there hasn't been an omnibus for it yet but 
Catwoman, Ed Brubaker. Next up, Secret Six by Gail Simone. Secret Six, Secret Six. One of the, I don't remember who recommended this series to me, but I'm really glad they did. So Gail Simone, I, I hadn't heard of before, and um, Secret Six was how I got introduced to her. It is still very near and dear to my heart. It's a villain book that I thoroughly enjoy and that I know a lot of people have not experienced yet. So it's a tough thing with this one because, uh, you know, it wasn't a huge title and so it had to go through some of these mini series iterations and stuff. So it started off with Villains United spiraling out of infi um, Infinite Crisis, yep. And then you had uh, the mini series in 06 and then in 08 it ran for 36 issues and in 2014 uh, with the new 52, Gail Simone started another series for it. So in total you've got 62 issues, which I think is too crazy to stuff into one, vo uh, one omnibus. So obviously this would have to be a two-volume omnibus set, sort of stopping halfway through uh, the 2008 series, just so that you know the second volume isn't only 14 issues. But uh, right now there's a, a bunch of trade paperbacks uh, you can get for it. The earlier ones, sort of in the top left corner, uh, the first row really are, are quite expensive to get now. They're, um, they're, they've also gone out of print, but they were pretty recent prints. I, I missed out on it myself and I wish I, I hadn't. So a little bit of info on this series. Uh, you have a pretty fun team with Catman, Bane, Ragdoll, um, Scandal Savage, uh, Cheshire, 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 um, and Deadshot. So you've got a really nice group of villains. You get to see ba a Catman fight Batman as the other teams um, break someone out of uh, Blackgate. You get introduced to creepy villains like Junior. Of course, you get Bane in this series, and Bane's great in this series because he, uh, Gail Simone does something a little different with him and makes him sort of a father figure for Scandal Savage. And uh, he really works well with the team again as sort of being like this dark silent protector figure who's uh just ready to to kick butt he's also trying to stay off the venom we see you know characters like wonder woman come in there's a lot of supernatural stuff going on in this series with especially with the cheshire character who gets introduced i believe in this wonder woman act um some of the storylines you know they they get a get out of hell free card again you have this junior character that comes up um, it's it's a really crazy fun ride in the, the 2014 series. I haven't read it entirely um, You know you you get again for, in terms of the omnibus oversized artwork We're talking about Ken Lashley here uh, Nicholas Scott Dale Eaglesham uh, It's a, a few other amazing artists like really really incredible names uh, That did some work on secret six both you know the original stuff and the 2014 stuff it definitely deserves the oversized edition uh, in my opinion just for the art's sake alone and the story is so much fun it's so different it's not like suicide squad uh it's very dark twisted but a lot of fun secret six gail simone and next up the batman adventures by a whole bunch of people tile templeton uh rick bouquet a whole a whole slew of people so basically this we're talking about batman adventures 1 through 36 batman and robin adventures batman gotham adventures and then batman adventures volume 2 a lot a lot of content this would probably be four omnibuses um, based on my uh, on the number of issues uh, that we've got in total here, but um, all I really care about is Batman Adventures and Batman and Robin Adventures, to be honest with you. The Batman Adventures are four trade paperbacks. You can pick them up. They are not out of print. I don't think they're very difficult to find or expensive. You can probably just get them on Amazon. Uh, Batman and Robin Adventures, same thing for the first three. There was a fourth one, fourth one solicited, and it got canceled, unfortunately. The same thing goes for the first trade paperback of Batman Gotham Adventures, which was the, is the spiritual successor. So it's unfortunate, and um, a lot of people like Batman the Animated Series. Maybe no one's been paying attention to these books. If you haven't, start paying attention to them because they are. if you're a fan of Batman the Animated Series, this is the comic for you. It's literally, uh, you know, at times they would continue the show um at times they would fill in the gaps between the seasons or whatever it may be um i mean it's it's it it's such a spiritual successor to the show i loved reading it so much it's fun it's adventurous the artwork um i forget i, I do apologize i forget the names of the folks who worked on it but man talk about channeling the energy of the show 
Um, I think Bruce Tim and Paul Dini got involved with this series at some point as well. I'm pretty sure they did. I'm 100% sure they did. So, I mean, you're talking about the creators of the show as well. It's fantastic stuff. Of course, it goes from Batman Adventures to then Batman and Robin, where you've just got Robin there as well. And then Bath Batman Gotham Adventures is uh, is just a continuation of the Batman and Robin adventure series, really. Um, and what's really cool about it, too, is you get to see the artwork from the show. So you get the character designs from the show. And you get to see the comic evolve the same way the show did, right? So Robin becomes Nightwing, and you get to see him rocking the mullet. It's fantastic. So much fun. If you can get the trade paperbacks and bind them, do it. That's probably where I'm going to go with this because, unfortunately, I, even though I love this series, I don't ever see it getting an omnibus. I wish, but we'll see Batman Adventures by various people, a bunch of them. The Spectre by John Ostrander, Tom Mandrake. So I swear I had this list created before Matt and I started talking about our wish lists on the live stream last night. But we've got 63 issues here from 0 to 62 with an annual. There were two trade paperbacks released. That's it. That collected issues 1 through 22, nicely recolored and all that, which was fantastic. So we're talking about a two-volume set here, the same thing Matt's got with his beautiful custom binds. This time, oversized, though. I mean, again, if, if we're talking about oversized books, the artwork has to be spot on, right? And with, with Tom Mandrick's artwork... If you haven't seen it, he deserves oversized editions. He deserves bright, crisp coloring. Maybe even an absolute edition. I don't know. Either way, 62 issues, 63 issues with the annual, two volumes. And basically, you know, you'd, you'd be collecting the entire run by those two gentlemen. There were fill-in artists, of course, along the way. But the Spectre is, for those of you that don't know, essentially he's... To make a quick comparison, this the Ghost Rider of the DC Universe. He is the the vengeance of, I believe it's the, is it the vengeance of God? The, it's something like that. I forget. It's early. But uh, what John Ostrander and Tom Mandrick do, first of all, Tom Mandrick does a beautiful job of really making that, you know, making him look like a specter. Stretching him, elongating him, making him deformed. Uh, showing pain and, and suffering in his eyes. I mean, it's incredible what Tom Mandrake does. And uh, John Ostrander's stories are really incredible. They're really fascinating looks on humanity. And um, I guess the acts of, of humans, of course, you know, the specter is there to punish people, right? So um, he's got to punish bad. It's, it's a very, very interesting se series. It ran for a good amount of time. And, you know, it's, Everyone, anyone that I know who's read it has thoroughly enjoyed it. And I can only hope that some way we do get to see a page like this one in an oversized edition. Uh, like I said, with real nice coloring. Um, if not, DC could just continue to please just do the trade paperbacks and we'll bind them. Not all of us can have a lovely, lovely set of custom binds like Matt. The Spectre, John Ostrander, Tom Mandrake. Hopefully, I wish. And lastly, Superman by Jeff Johns. So there was a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, Jeff Johns sort of wrote a bunch of Superman within a whole lot of series. Uh, Secret Origin was a six-issue mini. Then he wrote a bunch of issues in Superman, Adventures of Superman, Man of Steel, Action Comics, DC Comics Presents, and The Man of Steel, giving us a 42-issue total run. If I miss any issues on any of these guys, I apologize. I mean, I do the best I can, but I'm not perfect. So this would be one nice omnibus, one big omnibus collecting all this. There are about four trade paperbacks to collect the entire run now. Um, I, th I think they're all available. Maybe the Legion of Superheroes one is a little more difficult to find, but I don't think it's expensive if you can find it. You know, it, it would be nice... Um, of course, this isn't the reading order. They'd have to take care of that themselves because it seemed like he wrote a lot of crossover uh, series. But either way, you know, with Secret Origin, you've got Gary Frank on artwork. Again, we're talking about oversized books. In this, you know, in, in Jeff John's run alone, he's got Gary Frank, um, Eric Powell, John Sybil, and Andy Kubert doing artwork. If any of those guys don't deserve oversized artwork... Call me crazy. I mean, some of the some beautiful, beautiful pages in in this uh, in this run. I haven't personally read the run, so I can't speak to the story itself. 
I'm sort of doing a, uh, it's Jeff Johns, probably it's safe to say it's a good book, a good read, um, but I don't personally know myself. I've heard mixed reviews and I didn't include the new Krypton stuff in here because I've heard it's not very good and he doesn't write all of it. But I mean, look at some of this artwork. Would that not be incredible to see in a nice oversized edition? Um, I, I, I don't know if I'd go again. I don't know the storyline. It's hard for me to say absolute if I don't know the storyline, but it looks super exciting. I would love to have this collected. Pretty much everything else that Jeff Johns has done has had an oversized hardcover. I do, it's just his Superman run for whatever reason and, and his Stargirl. Fair enough. But Andy Kubert artwork, I mean, it's, um, yeah, hopefully. I'm a big fan of Jeff Johns. I'm a big fan of uh, DC, a big fan of Superman. So all of this and a big fan of omnibuses. So all of this screams to me, um, screams out to me, this should be a book already, please. But that's it for this first round. Um, I, I'm going to do an, a, a Marvel round next, and then I'll, you know, I've got some more ideas for other books I'd like from DC and Marvel. So, um, just thought I'd throw five in there. What are your thoughts? Have you thought about these books as omnibuses at all? Um, would you be interested in these books as omnibuses? Let me know if I missed anything. I probably did. Probably missed tie-in issues or something important. But please let me know what your thoughts are below. Um, more will come soon, I hope. And hopefully we do get to see these books at some point. I hope we do anyway. I hope. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in. This is Mike from the Hardcover Comic. Until next time, as always, you stay classy, Internet.